So at the end of last year, I went through the rankings for the top 10 for the men, and I made some predictions to see where everyone would be at the end of the season. Of course, there was a lot of injuries to some key names, so it's going to look a little bit dodgy, but let's go have a look at how many I got right, and more importantly, how many I got wrong. So coming in at number 10, I've got Yannick Sinner. Now, some of you might have him a lot higher because he has got the potential to be in the top five, possibly in the future, maybe even a number one somewhere down the track. All right, so I had Sinner a little bit lower than maybe some of you might have had because... Because, of course, I didn't expect him to do as well as he did, especially at the end of the year, where he really dominated the season, only lost to a couple of guys towards the end of the season post-US Open. Um, I did have him playing well at Wimbledon and made the semifinals there, so I got that one. But, yeah, I had Sinner way lower than maybe I should have. Probably should have put him in the middle of the top 10. But I just didn't think he'd made the ATP Finals, and that's where he definitely proved me wrong by making the final of the finals, going undefeated until that final, winning uh, tournaments, making the finals of big tournaments as well. But uh, Yannick Sinner, number 10, way lower than he should have been. Coming in at number 9 now, and I've got Holger Runa. Now, again, another player that a lot of you might have much higher in the top 10, but I'm just a little worried at his game at slams. So I wasn't too far off. He finished at number eight in the world. He was number nine, I think, going into the final weeks of the year as well. So I only was one spot away, not too bad. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that one. And he did okay at the slams. You know, he did make the quarterfinals of the uh, Wimbledon, or also the French Open. Uh, yet again, made a, a good run at the Australian Open as well at the start of the year, but it was those points at the end of the year in Paris, uh, towards the end of the season when he had all those massive chunk of points. Uh, he did play well in Rome and Monte Carlo, which I didn't expect at the start of the clay court season, and he got to the final of those two events. So maybe if he had won one of those, he might have been a lot higher, but wasn't too far off with the one spot away at number nine. He finished number eight. Coming in at number eight now, it's Alexander Zverev. Now, very impressed with how he's come back the last couple of weeks. And it looks like his injury might be behind him. And I was going to put him a lot higher, but I just couldn't justify putting him too high because that foot is still a worry for me. And he could be out for months if that foot gets re-injured. So it wasn't too far away. Zverev finished at seven. I put him at number eight. Uh, didn't think he'd go high up the rankings. He left, ended up losing to Medvedev a bunch of times, which kind of stopped him from going to the finals of some events. Uh, of course, made the semifinals of the French Open. Again, you know, getting those points and regaining those points. So he didn't lose too many points at the start of the season, then gained everything at the end. Making the ATP Finals as well really helped. But not too mad at that one with seven and eight. Not too far away. Coming in at number seven now is Kasper Ruud. Now, currently in the top three. So a lot of people are probably thinking, hang on, why isn't he going to stay in that top three? So he finished number 11 in the world, did drop down from number three to number 11. I did think he would drop down and... Couldn't replicate those US Open and the ATP Finals points, of course. Didn't qualify for the ATP Finals, which makes it really hard to defend those points. He did make the French Open final, though, which was a bit of a surprise. Back-to-back -back finals. Lost to Djokovic. Last year, he lost to Rafa. So maybe if he avoids those guys, he might actually win a French Open. But very unlucky for Rude not to sort of do better, I guess, on some of the hardcore events. He did have a really bad run, losing you know, first, second, third rounds, especially at the Australian Open, US Open. Played terrible at those events. And of course, didn't play well at Wimbledon and doesn't like playing on grass. So that kind of throws a lot of points out the window as well. Coming in number six now, I've got Stefano Pass. Now it's hard not to put him higher, but it's also, I don't think I can put him any lower. He hasn't played very well at the big tournaments. So my first right prediction, spot on, number six in the world. He did make the Australian Open final, of course, which kind of saved a lot of his points from the start of last year, but couldn't replicate most of those other things. Couldn't get to the final of Cincy. In fact, I think he lost in the second or third round. Uh, Monte Carlo, he lost as well, which really hurt his rankings. So he did go up the rankings a little bit at the start of the season, but he just went down from there and he ended up at number six, made the ATP finals, but got injured. Didn't get to play that event uh, to its end. So maybe next year he gets a little bit better, but number six in the world, spot on, I'll take it. Coming in at number five, and this might shock a bunch of you, but I've got Carlos Alcaraz. I'm just kind of like rude. I feel like they've had a very good season, but I'm just a little worried about backing it up next year, and I think now he is going to fall down. All right, so look, this prediction was not great. Number five, man, I mean, how disrespectful. I should have put him in at least top three. Uh, was number one on and off throughout the whole season. Of course, Djokovic sharing that ranking with him, but... Man, I just didn't expect that Wimbledon win. He won Wimbledon. That really helped his ranking. He obviously replicated Madrid, won that again, made the semifinals of the US Open, which was enough to get him into the A to B finals, which again, he made the semifinals there, made a bunch of points. So yeah, number five, man, I, I expected a bit of a sophomore slump and he just got better and better, Alcaraz. How will he do next year though? Will he get to stay at number two or maybe next year will he drop down to number five instead? But 
Man, I should have had him in the top three. I'm so stupid. Coming in number four, I've got Felix Ogelia-Seam. Now, this will be a massive jump for him if he can get there, but I feel like he turned a corner in 2022. All right, so by far my worst prediction of this top 10 list. FAA finished 29 in the world. He played terrible throughout. He didn't make a slam final. It wasn't even close to making a slam final. Could barely win a match throughout the middle of the season. He was injured a little bit, but that's no excuse for the terrible form that he had. He lost a lot of points at the end. He did win Basel, to his credit, which defended those points, but it wasn't enough, and he was way down the rankings. He fell out of the top 10 after, like, three or four months. So my worst prediction by a long shot, I thought FAA would go from strength to strength. He went and had that sophomore slump that I thought Elkrez would have. Coming in at number three now, we've got Rafa Nadal. And I know a lot of people are going to think, wait, hang on, how come Rafa's not number one? Why aren't you going to put him at number one? So this was a tough one because I think everybody had Rafa in their top five, if not top three. And as I said at the end of last year, you know, number one in the world, he could have got there had he have not got injured. He's currently 600 and something in the world. So, I mean, look, this is such a, a tough one because, yeah, it's not right. I'm way off. But I don't think it's my worst prediction because you can't predict injuries. Of course, got injured in Australia, didn't get to play for the rest of the year, dropped all these points. He's going to start this season or next season with practically no points. So, yeah, look, that's a tough one. Rafa top three. I did think he would drop down a little bit, but, man, who thought that injury was going to happen? All right, coming in number two now, and I've got Daniel Medvedev. Now, a little bit strange. He was number one at some points this season, but I feel like this year was very disappointing. Once he lost that Australian Open final, he just never regained the confidence. Also suffered with injury as well. So I reckon Medvedev will make a massive comeback next year and finish at number two. Uh, he's currently, I think, number six or seven in the world. So he did actually fall out of the top ten after the Australian Open. He did lose all those points because he did lose the quarter at the Australian Open. And then he did rocket back up the rankings and got to number two in the world. I think either before the French Open or before Wimbledon, one of those tournaments, he made it to number two in the world. Uh, finished at number three. So back in the top three. And he was that solid number three guy until the end of the season where he started losing to Sinner, who started to make his presence felt and, you know, ending up in number four, Sinner himself. But Medvedev at number two, I don't think that's a bad prediction. I think, you know, making the US Open final definitely helped. Beating Alcaraz definitely helped. Uh, he won four tournaments out of five in that start of the year hard court season as well after the Australian Open. So really did well, Medvedev, and got back up the rankings as he should be. And the number one ranking is going to be Novak Djokovic. I, I think most people are putting Djokovic as number one, even if you're not a fan of his, just because of what he did without playing every tournament this year. He didn't play so many massive events. All right, and finished with a high. Got Djokovic at one, predicted him at one. He was number one. Uh, look, him and Alcaraz traded the number one ranking for a while, but it wasn't until the end of the year where he just took over the number one ranking and stayed there at number one. Next year is going to be a little bit trickier, but we'll see what happens. Maybe, you know, not being number one at the end of the year next year might be a possibility, but I mean, it was a no-brainer. He had so many points to gain. He was allowed to play in America. That was a huge plus. Plus the Wimbledon points came back. He made the final there, of course. And then winning the French was just kind of a bonus as well. So Novak Djokovic, world number one. I'll take that all day. So I don't think I did too badly. Again, seven out of the 10 I got right. I got a couple in their right position as well with Guys like Djokovic at one and City Pass in the middle there. Didn't have Rublev in the top 10. He finished at number five. Massive disrespect there. FAA, I, I bought into the hype way too much. Uh, hopefully next year he can do a little better. Her catch and Fritz. I didn't think Fritz would stay in the top 10, and he did, to his credit. And I gave a couple of other guys that, you know, maybe didn't deserve to be in the top 10. Maybe I gave him a little bit too much credit. But let me know in the comments below. How did you go with your predictions this year or last year? For this year, we're going to do these videos again, of course, in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for those and see how many we can get right for the new season. But I'll take that. I wasn't too mad at those ones, especially with Djokovic at number one. Medvedev in that top three. Maybe should have given Elkris a bit more credit. Same with Sinner. But hey, there's always next year.